Welcome back to The Watch List. I'm Nicole Petaliti. It's time to break down those numbers from Apple as the company reported its numbers, but a lot of hope for the company, particularly for, let's say, the VR headset and those iPhones. So let's have a conversation here. Where is Apple headed? Antoine Chakabian is with us, research analyst on the technology infrastructure team at New Street Research, and Daniel Rubino, editor-in-chief Windows Central. Thank you both for being with us. Daniel, I'll start with you. Your thoughts. Uh, we talked about the headset. It certainly has had a lot of excitement and pre-orders and that took off more, even more, even at that high price point. What'd you think about Apple's numbers? You know, it's a little bit all over the place, you know, so like the iPhone sales and revenue was up 6%. That's really good news. Uh, you know, expectations were a little bit lower for that. Services were up 11% too. That's very good. Slightly below expectations, but still growth. On the other hand, the iPad was down 25%, which is not good. And the iPad's been declining for the last few quarters and it looks like a market that's, you know, running a little bit dry. Now, to be fair, Apple didn't refresh the iPad in 2023, so there was a lack of a new product there. But I also think the iPad may be a category that is, you know, finally kind of coming to an end. They'll still sell them, of course, but they're just not going to be the must have gift or, you know, device yeah. people need. Then you have the Apple Watch also went down quite a bit you know so but the revenue for the apple watch isn't too high anyway uh, i think my biggest concern here is apple doesn't have a single thing you can point to that is a growth market for them uh, iphones are flat but that's just reflective of the smartphone market which is flat itself pcs they're flat too so mac sales weren't very good either you know they held steady at flat but they're not improving at all so i don't know where apple goes from here the vision pro is not it the Vision Pro may be it years from now, but there's going to be a lot of research and development that goes into that to get there. And they're going to have to make profit and money there in between when that happens. So I don't know about the Vision Pro. It's something that a technology we talked about in 2022 with the metaverse and VR. And let's be clear, that's basically what this is. My, you know, uh, Apple calls it something different, but that's what it is. Meanwhile, the entire tech industry has moved on to AI. And lo and behold, people are making money with AI. I don't know where Vision Pro fits into that. And I think that has people worried as well as, of course, China and the uh, decline of iPhone sales there. But that was also expected. Uh, Antoine Skybaum, you have neutral 175, you note the slower growth and not necessarily seeing too many catalysts at this point. Could you elaborate on some of that? We want to get in your mind on the world of Apple. Yes, thanks Nicole uh, for having me. So yes, I, as Daniel mentioned, uh, I think Vision Pro is not going to be, um, you know, any, any sort of catalyst any, anytime soon. Um, it's unlikely to drive positive, positive surprise. The product will take long to mature, to build an ecosystem. So it's, it's not going to help the, the stock in the near term. Um, in the longer run, it could start playing a role. Um, you know, if you, if you look at Apple scores business, uh, it's, a, it's a business that maybe can grow three to 5% uh, revenues. So it can generate maybe six to 7% uh, earnings growth, dividends, free cash flow growth on a, on a sustainable basis. Um, and you, you would need catalysts to add to that growth to reach the, the level of, of free cash flow growth that would justify the level of premium um, on which Apple is training compared to the S&P. Uh, if, you, if you look at where the stock trades today, it's uh, trading on 29 times a forward EPS. That's a 50% premium compared to the other uh, S&P names that are growing uh, low to mid single digits revenues. So um, what we're saying here is that as long as investors don't have, you know, um, visibility on, on catalysts that could accelerate that growth a bit further, um, I think that the, the multiple is at, is at risk and it's probably um, not the best investment today. You would have to wait for a, a pullback, for sentiment to turn a bit more negative um, and, uh, and more attractive valuation. Yeah, I know you noted some of the share losses in China, though it was good news that um, they did well enough in China, even with the ban on the iPhones um, in the government buildings, for example. Just quickly, Antoine, do you have another name in the tech realm that you have a buy on very fast? Absolutely, yes, we have, we have, a, we have a few. We've been doing you know, a lot of work recently uh, uh, around the 400 billion data center uh, AI accelerator TAM that AMD put out uh, late last year. 
um, we've been trying to make sense of uh, how much AI capex that implies uh, on the 2027 horizon and which are the names exposed. Okay. And um, one name that really came out is, is actually AMD. Because if you, if you take a 400 okay. billion data center AI accelerator TAM, if you have the conviction that GPUs are going to dominate that TAM, which we do, because we, we did some very in-depth work on the architectures of GPUs and how flexible they are and how much of an ecosystem support they have. Well, GPUs will generate in excess of $200 billion on the 2027 horizon. And today it's a single vendor market with Nvidia dominating it, but it's not going to remain like that forever if uh, the market grows by that much. And so even if AMD captures like a small percentage of that time, that's tremendous upside. Uh, and so even if we're maybe a bit more uh, conservative on the rest of the business and the CPU front, um, the fact that their gaming business is probably undergoing a correction, um, same, uh, you know, okay. in, in the embedded business, it's still a very good place okay. uh, to, to be and to play generative yes. AI going forward. Okay, thank you both so much. Antoine Schaivan, New Street Research. Daniel Rubino, thank you so much. Windows Central, great to see you both.